this is Pastor Corey Allen Duncan Sr. I am the senior pastor of the City of Hope Community Church located right here in the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. And we are doing something that is unprecedented for the first time that I could ever remember in my life. Y'all, we are not permitted to come into the church and worship, but understand this. They may shut down the building, but they cannot shut down the body. That we are the body of Christ. As a matter of fact, in the book of Acts, they met at the homes daily preaching and teaching the word of God. So I'm so excited to have this opportunity to come to you virtually, digitally, uh, for this online experience and to share the word of God with you on today. Look, I want to call your attention to the book of Matthew, Matthew the 14th chapter. I have a word that I believe it is relevant, it is real, it is raw, it is going to meet you right where you are, and it's going to be a blessing to you. Matthew the 14th chapter, starting at verse 22. I want to pray with you. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. So Father God, I thank you for this platforming, allowing all of us to come online together to hear and receive the word of God. Father God, I pray that you will bless everybody that will tune in, everybody, Father God, that will be a part of this particular uh, 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 episode or this particular uh, opportunity for us to worship together in spirit and truth. Father God, I pray that as I share the gospel, that somebody's heart will be open, that somebody will be receptive to the word. Do what you desire to do in the midst of this place. Father God, we're grateful that although they may shut down the building, they cannot shut down the body. Have your way in the midst of this place. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, let's, let's go to work. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 27. The Bible declares, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he went uh, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Don't forget that. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! They cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Ooh, my brothers and sisters, let's go to work. For the next few moments, while you are tuned in to uh, the City of Hope Community Church Sunday morning online experience service, I want to talk from the subject of God will get me through this. God will get me through this. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Get it in your spirit. I need you to say it. I need you to write it down. I need you to put it on your refrigerator. I need you to put it on your bathroom mirror. I need it to be your mantra. I need you to say God will get me through this. Y'all, as a child, understand that when it came to storms, storms would creep me out. But as a child, y'all, it would start raining outside. We would be fast asleep. It would be thundering. It would be lightning, y'all. The wind would be howling. And as little children, we were scared. We was afraid. They would creep me out. That I shared a room with my brother. My sister was across the hall. And whenever it was storm, she would come in there to get us. Or my mother, she would come upstairs and she would get us. And she would gather us. And she would take us downstairs into the basement where we would form a little pallet you know we would all be safe and secure in the basement because as a child storms would creep me out now watch this y'all as an adult storms don't creep me out storms they sleep me out come on that as an adult, y'all, there is no sleep like the sleep that comes from a storm. Y'all, when it storms outside, we will sleep. I don't know about you, but I will sleep like a baby. That it could be thundering, it could be lightning, the wind could be doing what the wind does, and to me, it matters not. Storms, as an adult, they sleep me out. Now, this is what this is what's crazy. You may ask yourself, well, what's the difference between being a child and what's the difference between being an adult? Why is it, Pastor Duncan, that as a child, storms would creep you out 
But as an adult storms, they sleep you out. Now watch this. I believe that your mentality is based off of your maturity. Mm, I just said something. I believe that your mentality is based off of your maturity. That as a child, y'all, I was so creeped out. I was so scared because I was not mature enough to know. Look, look, same lightning, same thunder, same wind. But as an adult, I grew up and I matured. Watch this. And I began to recognize that my mentality of the storm is based off my maturity and my experience when it comes to storms. And I believe that this is a season and that this is the time that God, watch this, he wants us to mature us in the faith. That this is a season, watch this, that God just doesn't want us to go through, but God wants us to grow through. And God desires that we grow as it relates to our faith. Don't miss this. I've heard it said that when it comes to storms, either you're going through a storm either you're in the middle of a storm or you're coming out of a storm did you hear what I said that they said when it comes to storms either you're going in a storm you're in the middle of a storm or you're coming out of a storm and all I, I, I'm reminded of that old school song there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this old way and if your soul's not anchored in Jesus you will surely drift the way. I don't know if you've been in tune to what's taking place in our nation, but if you check the weather report around the country, they're saying that it's cloudy with the chance of sickness, sadness, and suffering. That if you check the weather report, they're saying it's cloudy with the chance of death, destruction, and devastation. If you check the weather report, they're saying it's cloudy with the chance of mishap, misery, and misfortune. Come on, good times. If you check the weather report, they're saying it's cloudy with temporary layoffs, easy credit ripoffs, scratching and surviving, hanging in a child line, that it's cloudy with the chance of the coronavirus. Y'all, we are in the midst of a storm in our city, in our nation, in our world. We are in the midst of the storm, but I didn't come to stress you. I didn't come to depress you. I came to bless you and to let you know that God will get me through this. God is going to get us through this. Come on, I know you're not here with me uh, virtually, but I need you to air high five somebody across the room and just let them know that God will get us through this. Y'all watch this. As we begin to wade into the waters of the word found in Matthew, the 14th chapter, we see Jesus preaching and proclaiming principles and parables that are practical, portable, and primarily profitable for a prosperous life. Come on, Dr. Seuss, who? I said that as we wade through the waters of this particular text, we see Jesus doing what Jesus does. And what's amazing about the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew, it starts out kind of hard that Jesus gets word that he loses John the Baptist, that his homeboy, his cousin, John the Baptist is beheaded and Jesus tries to steal away to process and digest what's happened to his loved one. But even when he tries to steal away, the Bible the Bible says the crowds, they found out where he was and they went and bombarded him. And Jesus looked at them as with compassion and he begins to heal the sick and minister to the people. Then we see Jesus feeding the 5,000 besides uh, men, besides women and children. And after all of these things takes place, Jesus tells his disciples to get into the boat going over to the other side because he's going into the mountains to pray. Now don't miss this y'all, very important part, major key alert I need you to get. Watch this, he tells the disciples to go on to the other side, watch this, he's going into the mountains to pray. 
Don't miss this, y'all. We see the Savior seeking solitude. Oh, I'm going to say that again. In that particular point, we see the Savior seeking solitude. That Jesus teaches us a very practical, powerful, and poignant lesson that he teaches us how to press pause. Now, this is what you need to understand, y'all, that when it comes to self-care, self-care is not selfish. That, that it's been said that you cannot pour from an empty cup. That there's a reason why the airline stewardesses will tell you that in the case that there's a loss in cabin pressure, they will tell you to secure your mask first before you try to help somebody else. Because if you do not secure your mask first, you will not be good to anybody else. Jesus, he teaches us how to press pause, that the Savior is seeking solitude. He needed, watch this, he needed to get refueled from the past and refilled for the future. I believe this break is holy. I believe it's, un, uh, it's of God. I believe that God has put us in a position to seek solitude. I believe that God has given us a 20 second time out. He's given us a full time out. He's given us the opportunity to seek solitude so that we can get refueled from the past and refilled for the future. Some of us, watch this, we're out here running on E, trying to help everybody else, trying to be the prescription to everybody's problem, trying to be the solution to everybody's situation, trying to be the cure to everybody's condition. But God's got a way of making you get somewhere and sat down. I don't know if anybody is in the room with you, but if they are, just look over at them and say, sat down. Down. Come on. That's right. S-A-T down. That God's got a way of making you get your hips, lips, and fingertips somewhere and sat down. Pastor Ken Sullivan of the New Direction Church, he says, I love it. He says, there's a purpose in the pause. There is a purpose in the pause. And when you begin to look around, everything has paused. Everything has stopped. But you don't have to fear or fret because there's a purpose in the pause. The question you have to begin asking yourself is what is the purpose of this particular pause? That this is the time for you to seek solitude in God and ask him what is the purpose of this particular pause? Maybe God wants to slow you down. Maybe God wants you to spend some time with your kids. Maybe God is giving you the gift of solitude. Maybe this is the time to catch up on some extra reading or to start the business plan or to get creative in the midst of a crisis. I don't know what it is, but you need to seek God and begin to ask him, what is the purpose of this pause? That Jesus, watch this, we see the Savior seeking solitude. Let me give you the B portion of that though. We also watch this. <laughs> Not only do we see the Savior seeking solitude, but we see Christ in communion with the Creator. Mm. The Bible says he goes to the mountain to pray. Jesus is praying. Y'all, this is so powerful. Y'all, this is an opportunity for us to pray. I don't know if Jesus was praying for himself. I don't know if he was praying for the disciples. I don't, the text doesn't say who he was praying for or what he was praying for, but we see Christ in communion with the creator. And I want to let somebody in here know today oh, that this is a wonderful opportunity for us to pray. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to stand in the gap. That this is a wonderful opportunity for us to pray for those who are infected and those who are affected by this virus. Did you hear what I said? That this is an opportunity for us to pray for those who are infected and those who are affected by this particular virus. Y'all. At our church, we're praying for pockets of people affected by this particular virus. Every day we send out a new prayer card or a new prayer request. We're praying for people in health care. 
that they are on the front lines of this particular situation, that even people in hospitals are getting infected by the, y'all, this is the time to pray for our nurses and doctors and our first responders. This is the time to stand in the gap. Y'all, we're, we're, one day we prayed for grocery store workers. I went to the grocery store a couple of days ago and I was telling people, I'm praying for you. Hey, I appreciate you. I was telling them, thank you. I was telling them, hey, be encouraged, hang in there. Because they are on the front lines themselves and putting themselves at risk of everything that's taking place. Y'all, what, look, look, today, y- yesterday we prayed for funeral home workers. Oh, do you understand that funeral home workers are charged with the responsibility of going to the houses of of individuals who are infected and pass from this disease. They gotta work around these bodies. That funeral home workers, y'all, they gotta deal with this as well. Watch this, y'all. And, and, and they are even putting restrictions in place as it relates to the funerals. That some places can only have 10 people come into the funeral. Can you imagine a loved one dying and you have to choose only 10 people that are permitted to come to the funeral? Oh, I've heard in some places only one person can go to the graveyard. There are so many people who are infected, so many people who are affected by what's going on. And Jesus gives us a perfect picture of how to deal with the predicament and it's time to pray. I love it, y'all. While Jesus is in the mountain getting his breakthrough, the disciples are in a storm and they are going through. Don't miss this. That verse 24, Matthew 14, 24 says, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary. We're going to come to that, y'all. Can I give you a little uh, 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 background so you don't miss the breakdown? Understand, y'all, that the story continues to unfold at the Sea of Galilee, which lies in the lower portion of the Jordan Valley in a mountain range that rises to 4,000 feet above sea level, that the lake itself is 700 feet below the Mediterranean Sea. That one of the more noteworthy aspects of this particular body of water is that it is greatly susceptible to sudden and extremely violent storms. Don't miss this. That these storms are caused by the cold air rushing down from the mountains surrounding it and colliding with the warm, moist air rising off the surface of the water itself. That these conditions have caused a violent storm to arise and the disciples are smack dab in the middle, in the middle of the storm. Though it was only, uh, they were only supposed to travel a short distance, the storm was so violent that despite all of their control, uh, their efforts to control their boat, the storm had driven them out into the very midst of the sea that they had been rowing and straining at their oars for hours and they were totally exhausted. Now hold up, wait a minute. I hear somebody saying, wait a minute, pastor, uh, aren't these professional fishermen, aren't they used to this? Haven't they navigated rough waters before? Mm, Good question, I see you thinking. Understand that sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you will get caught up in uncharted territory and get caught up in water waters that you never navigated, situations that are above your experience, circumstances in which you have no point of reference. Now I want to talk to somebody because the reality is we are in uncharted territory. I'm going to say that again just in case you didn't know. We are in uncharted territory. The things we are seeing and experiencing, we've never seen before. I've never seen the NBA shut down. I've never seen them push back to Major League Baseball season. I've never seen high school sports all the way shut down. I've never seen stores have to close and they're restricting large gatherings 
gatherings to just 50 people in 10. I've never seen this before. Pastors have never seen anything like this before. We're rushing and scrambling, trying to put systems and processes in place to make sure that we are still touching our members. We are facing situations that are above our experience grade, circumstances in which we have no point of reference. That the text says, the Bible says that they were in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves. Watch this, for the wind was contrary. Oh, I love that word, contrary, contrary. It means diametrically opposed to something. Y'all, they were fighting the wind. Don't miss this, y'all. I hope y'all tuned in. They were fighting the wind. Y'all, watch this. <laughs> they were fighting the wind. An invisible enemy. That they were fighting an invisible enemy that was diametrically opposed to them. Oh, when it comes to this, understand we've been here before that right now we are fighting an invisible enemy, that this disease is an invisible enemy. They talk about you don't know who has it and who doesn't has it, that it takes for some people seven to 14 days for any type of uh, symptoms to show up. They talk about that it can live on clothing and on uh, various objects for an extended period of time. We are fighting an invisible enemy. That's why it pays to just stay at home. If you ain't got to come out, don't come out, stay at home. Learn how to cook, quit going to church's chicken and buying jalapeno poppers and stop y'all going out to eat. You don't know who has it and you don't know who does not. We are fighting an invisible enemy. I got a call yesterday from an individual in the hospital that's battling with pneumonia, taking the test, get the results later to see if they have it fighting an invisible enemy. I seen somebody's Facebook live talking about a man who contracted this disease from body from somebody that was at his job. Y'all got sick one day in less than a week. He's gone. We are fighting an invisible enemy. But this is not the first time that we have seen it. For the Bible says in Ephesians 6, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this age, that even the devil is an invisible enemy, fighting an invisible enemy. So what do you do when you're in the middle of the sea of life, tossed by the waves of worry and weary and weariness fighting an invisible enemy. This is what it is, y'all. You got to know that God will get me through this. Come on. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Get it in your spirit that God will get me through this. Pat yourself on the chest. Make it a mantra. Repeat it. God will get me through this. But you're going to ask yourself, how, Pastor Duncan, how Will God get me through? Let me run you, uh, uh, wade you through the waters of the text to let you know. Now, first of all, three things I want to share and we're going to shut it down. Number one, God will get me through by meeting me in the middle. Yes, God will get me through by meeting me in the middle. For verse 25 says, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Oh, what does he do? He meets them in the midst of the storm and in the middle of the storm. That he is the master even in the middle of the storm. That whatever you are going through, whatever you are dealing with, whatever you are experiencing in your life, understand that God will meet you in the middle. Oh, we know that we're in the middle of a storm right now. And I want to encourage somebody and let you know that God will meet you in the middle. How do I know that God is going to bring me through this? Because God meets you in the middle. 
Now, Jesus always comes to us in the middle of the storms of life. This is reminiscent of the words of God to Isaiah. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. Why? Because God always meets us in the middle. I'm thinking about Smokey Norfolk. He has a song called In the Middle. He says, I was there in the middle of your pain. Yeah, I was there when they tried to take your hope away. I was there when you didn't know right from wrong. I was there when your friends walked out. You didn't know what to do. When you searched and found all of your family was gone, when you couldn't see your night from day, I was there when you couldn't find your way. I was there from the beginning until the very end. Be strong. I'm right there in the middle. Yeah, how do I know that God is going to get us through this? Because God in the middle. Y'all, the Bible says that this was the fourth watch of the night. Understand, y'all, the fourth watch of the night is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Everybody knows that this is the darkest hour of the night. But Jesus, watch this, he's here in their darkest hour. He shows up in their darkest hour. How do I know that God will get you through this? Because he always shows up in the darkest hour. That whatever you're going through, whatever you are experiencing in your life that right now you may be home with the corona. You may have a family member with the corona. You are, Whatever's going on in your life, God shows up in our He meets us in the middle. I'm reminded of the story of the footprints in the sand. You probably heard it before. If you didn't like to hear it, hear it go. That there was a man who looked back over his life and he seen the stories of his life. There were footprints in the sand and he began to notice that during the good parts of his life, he saw two sets of footprints in the sand. But when things got dark and dangerous and difficult, he only saw one set of footprints in the sand and the man got discouraged. He said, God, I see you was walking with me when things were going good. I seen two sets of footprints in the sand. When I got married, two sets of footprints in the sand. When I had my baby, two sets of footprints in the sand. When I graduated, two sets of footprints in the sand. But God, when I was going through the darkest times in my life, but yeah, God, when I was going through, I only seen one set of footprints in the sand. Why did you abandon me when I needed you most? Why did you leave me when I was going through? God says, you got this thing twisted, homeboy, that it wasn't that I abandoned you. When you saw only one set of footprints in the sand, it was then that I carried you. Can I help you know and understand that God, he does not leave us. He does not forsake us. He does not abandon us. As a matter of fact, during the dark and difficult times in our life, it is God who meets us in the middle and helps us to navigate through our pivotal circumstances. God will get you through. How? Because God will meet you in the middle. Not only does God meet us in the middle. Watch this. God, he says, you will get through this. How? Watch this. By cultivating my connection. That's right. I hope you're writing it down. I hope you're tweeting it. I hope you're sending somebody this information. He's going to help you get through by cultivating my connection. I often ask myself, why did Jesus walk on the water? Why did he have to do the crib walk on the water? Was he trying to show off? Was he trying to show off his power, his ability? No. Everything God does, it has a purpose. Everything that he does, it's a symbol. Everything that he does is for a reason. Yeah, And I believe that he walked on the water to show his disciples that the very thing they feared, the raging seething sea, was merely a set of steps for him 
him to come closer to them. Did you hear what I said? Don't miss it. That the very thing they feared, this raging sea, was once it was merely a set of steps for him to come closer to them. Oh, understand that storms ain't nothing but steps. Come on. Storms ain't nothing but steps, baby. Oftentimes we fear the difficult experiences of life, such as illness, a lost loved one, or financial hardships, only to discover that these experiences, they bring us closer to him. Mm, I like to say it like this, y'all. It's in the crisis that we discover who Christ is. Oh, y'all didn't know. I'm the hip hop pastor preacher. I got bars. It's in the crisis that we discover who Christ is. That when we go through these problems, either they're going to draw you or they're going or they're going to drive you. Either they're going to draw you nearer to him or they're going to drive you away from him. Watch this. What's the difference? I told you my mentality is based off of my maturity. Mm. The storm, it draw it look, it drew me closer to my parents when I was going through when I, when everything was happening, taking it drew me closer to my mom. It put me in the arms of my mother because it's either gonna draw you or it's gonna drive you. But God, in the midst of it all, He's cultivating your connection. I said, God, I, how can I help them understand this? And I thought about a situation that happened between me. And my son, one day I was driving home with my son and I began to notice that my son was very talkative. And this was a little unusual for him because he was so excited that he had his phone. But usually my son's face is buried in his phone. But now he's looking around. He's asking me questions. We're having dialogue. We're enjoying a father son time. And I said, hold up. Wait a minute. I said, son, um. Where is your phone? I said, don't even answer it. I said, it's dead, isn't it? He says, yes, dad. I said, oh, so you mean to tell me that some things have to die in order for us to get connected? That some things have to die in order for us, for you to talk to me? That some things have to die in order for us to have a closer connection? I don't know who I'm talking to, y'all, but understand, y'all, storms ain't nothing but steps. And oftentimes we go through things because God is trying to draw us closer to him. Sometimes things have to die. He'll let the business shut down. He'll close down the universities. He'll dry up the money that things will happen in our life opportunity for us to draw closer to him. It's in the crisis that we discover who Christ is. Oh, you're going to get through this thing. Pastor Duncan, how do you know I'm going to get through this thing? I already told y'all. Y'all watch this because he's going to meet you in the middle. Number one, understand he's cultivating your connection. Number two, but last but not least, when we out of here, you're going to get through this. Watch this by walking in faith and not in fear. You're going to get through this by walking in faith and not in fear. Verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Please understand this, y'all, that fear and faith cannot live in the same heart, that they cannot occupy the same space or the same place. For fear frequently blinds the eyes to the presence of the Lord. Understand that faith is not the absence of fear, but it's courage in the face of fear. When all you see is the problem, you lose sight of the prescription. Come on. That's why that's why it's got to be about faith because when all you see is the issue you lose sight of the answer when all you see is the situation you lose sight of the solution when all you see is the cause you lose sight of the cure and that's why second timothy 1 and 7 says that god has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love 
understand that fear and faith, faith and fear are polar opposite effects, that fear freezes you, that it pauses you and paralyzes you, that it halts you and hinders you, and it has you to stop and stand still. But the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight, that if fear pauses you, then faith causes you to move in expectation and anticipation that God will do just what he said. He say, preacher, that he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you, that God will do just what he says. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, that God will do just what he says. He says, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, that God will do just what he says. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid is going to do just what he said. Well, what did he say, preacher? In Psalm 91, he says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on. That surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be my shield and buckler. God is going to do just what he said. He says thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the, of the pestilence that walketh in the dark, nor the destruction that wasteth at the noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, and it shall not come nigh thee, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation and come on verse 10 there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way oh we got to walk by faith, baby, and not by sight. That faith is not the absence of fear, but it's courage in the faith. God will get me through this. How is God going to get me through this? By meeting me in the middle, by cultivating my connection, by walking in faith and not in fear. Ooh. If I was in church, y'all, I would be hooping right now. But I just want somebody to know and understand. Woo! I know you're going through a storm. I know there's a storm out on the ocean. I know the waves are tossing in the wind. This invisible enemy is everywhere. But I want to encourage you today and let you know that God will get me through this. God is going to see us through. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. God, he's going to see us through. God is going to meet you in the middle. Oh, he's going to cultivate your connection. Get ready to get closer to God and understand he's going to get you through when you walk by faith and not by sight. Hey everybody, this is Pastor Corey Allen Duncan Sr., the senior pastor right here at the City of Hope Community Church. Uh, Look, the Bible says, uh, he that hath an ear, let him or her hear what the Spirit is saying. I believe that the Spirit of God was moving, even in the midst of that message, and the Holy Spirit was whispering things into your heart, into your mind, and your spirit. I want you to understand that our story begins here. That after hearing such a powerful word, God, he wants us to respond in one of three ways. That after hearing that message, look, I, and I know we're on a digital platform. I know that we've had to switch the way we do things, but I want to still give you an opportunity to respond to the word that was preached. There are those of you that at this time, maybe you desire prayer, that God has pricked your heart. He has spoken some things in your heart, your mind, your spirit, things you need to do different, change things that you need to start, whatever. God has says, maybe you just want prayer at this time. And I would love for you to go to our, uh, our Facebook page, City of Hope Indy, and just put your prayer request on the page. I would love for you to be able to go um, 
on our app, the City of Hope Community Church app, or even our website where it says prayer requests. And I would love for you to go ahead and submit your prayer request so that we can touch and agree with you as it relates to your prayer request. Maybe you don't want prayer. Maybe you've heard this and even though it's a digital platform, you want to proceed with becoming a member of this church. That's right. You're saying, Pastor Duncan, I heard the word of God. I would love, I would love to be a member of your church. And I would love to have you as part of the family here at the City of Hope Community Church. And if that's you, this is all I need you to do. I need you to go to the app or go to the website uh, where it says member or I want to become a member. And I just need you to fill out that information so that we can connect to to connect with you and get you uh, assimilated into the body of this particular fellowship. May, may, maybe you want prayer, maybe you want to proceed with becoming a member of this church, or maybe you want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That you've heard this message on a digital platform and now you're saying, you know what? Maybe this is the first time you heard the gospel preached. Maybe the Holy Spirit has pricked your heart. You want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, watch this, that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pastor Duncan, is it that simple? Absolutely. If you can believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth on the Lord Jesus, God will save you. All you got to do, just, just, just do me a favor. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, oh, I need you in my life. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. Father God, I believe in my heart. I confess it with my mouth, the Lord Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe he rose again. Father God, I open up my heart and I desire to let Jesus in. I want him to be my Lord. I want him to be my savior. Father God, lead God and direct my every step. Show me what it means to be a child of God. I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus name, amen. Look. If you prayed that prayer, it's definitely the first step, and we want to connect with you regarding the final step. I told you our story begins here. If you prayed that prayer, go to the app, go to the website, cohnd.org, and I need you to let us know that you became, that, that, that you believed in Jesus, that you accepted him into your heart today so that we can reach out to you and get connected. Hey, this is Pastor Corey Allen Duncan Sr. I'm so very excited to have had this opportunity to come into your living room, to come into your house and preach the gospel. I want you to tune in next week to hear what thus saith the Lord. If you want more information about the City of Hope Community Church, visit us at www www.cohnd.org. Look, I love you with the love of the Lord, and I look forward to our time together on next week. Be safe out here. <laughs> Make sure you are abiding by the rules. I look forward to seeing you next week. I love you.